Michelle Seitz here. You're watching Macros. Here's the scenario. You have a document in which you have several numbers and units of measure, such as six liters. And you don't want the number and the unit to be separated at the end of a line. You could use the keyboard keys, control shift spacebar, but then you would most likely need to use both hands and hit three keys and the delete key. So you would like to create a macro that can do this for you with a click of a mouse. Watch this video to learn how. Before we begin our macro, let's do a little housekeeping first. In the quick access toolbar, click the down arrow and select more commands. Select customize ribbon. Now in this right field, you'll notice some check marks next to some of the tabs. The developer tab is one particular tab that we need in order to create a macro. So in order to see my developer tab, I wanna click in the developer checkbox and say okay. Before you create the macro, practice the steps you need to perform before you start the macro because the macro will record every step, good or bad, which could take the macro a few seconds more to run. After you have the steps down, Pat, go to the Developer tab, and before I hit Record Macro in the Code group, I want to make sure my cursor is placed after my number and before my unit of measure because I want to record as few steps as possible in my macro. Now that my cursor is where I want it to be, I'll click on Record Macro. In the first field, you want to name your macro. You can assign it a button, or you can assign it some keyboard keys if you like. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to create an icon on my quick access toolbar. In the stores macro in, there's a drop down. You can select to store your macro in all your documents, or you can store it in your current document. I'm going to store mine in all documents because I want it available on my quick access toolbar every time I open Word. There's also a description field. If your macro has many steps, you may want to document them in this field. I think mine is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to say OK. You can see the little cassette tape next to my mouse. That's telling me that my macro is recording. So now I want to record the steps for my macro. So for the non-breaking space, I need to hit Control Shift Spacebar, and then I want to delete the space that was in between the six and the L. And when I do that, the macro is created. Now I hit the Stop Recording icon. When I look in the macros, I can see that my non-breaking space macro has been created. Now I'm going to show you how to add that macro to your quick access toolbar and then customize it. Click the down arrow on your quick access toolbar. Select more commands. Now, as you can see in this area here, the quick access toolbar has been selected. Now, in the choose commands from field, click the down arrow and select macros. And as you can see, the macro we created is in the left field. First thing we want to do, we want to add it to the right field. So select it, click the add button, and now it is on the quick access toolbar. Now we want to modify it a little bit, give it a little bit of character. So we're going to select it and select modify. In this area here, you can give it an icon. Let's give it a little smiley face. 
And in this display name field, we can change the name of it. So we don't need the beginning part, normal.newMacros. So I'm going to take that out. Now I want to say OK. And now we can say OK again. And as you can see, the new macro has been added to our quick access toolbar. I'm going to show you how the macro works. So we put our cursor right after the number six, click the little smiley face, and voila, the non-breaking space was added between the number six and the letter L. And that is the end of this lesson, macros.